In this live self-defense training video, I'm gonna show you this homemade self-defense tool could save your life. This is just a 36 inch dowel rod. You can pick these up at any do-it-yourself store, Lowe's Hardware, uh, Home Depot, someplace like that. A little bit of sandpaper, a little bit of oil. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But first, I wanted to show you how this could save your life. This is just a hard piece of oak. It's an inch and a quarter in diameter. You can get it this thick or you can get it just a little bit smaller. One inch is just as good. It's 36 inches, which gives it reach advantage, meaning that it's longer than most bladed weapons. If you have the threat coming up to you, in front of you, you can immediately, from a walking position, walking stick, just bring it up between the legs. You can bring it in for a thrust. You can bring it to the side of the head very quickly for self-defense, trying to remove or destroy his ability to hurt you by taking away his ability to see, breathe temporarily, permanently, all of these basic things. Hello, Awkward the Cat, it's good to see you. But I wanted to show you how to practice, how to train with this 36 inch, we call this the Hanbo in martial arts, but it's just a simple walking stick. It's the uh, standard size of most walking sticks that you would buy at the store. So you can learn to train to defend yourself using this homemade self-defense tool that could save your life, and then take that skill and apply it to any other type of walking stick or even an umbrella. So your hand will start here like you're walking down the street with it. The first thing I want you to do is slide your hand down the front of your stick and put it in a position between you and the threat. We're gonna call this bag. This is just a striking bag. And you don't have to have a striking bag. You can practice all this in the air. But if you want one of these, I put a link below because you keep asking me, where do you get these? Are they durable? I've hit these things for years and years and years with all of the different tools that I use for self-defense and they don't tear, they don't break, they last forever. But there's a link below if you wanna see it, it's just a training bag. Your hand slides down the front, you pick it up, and you're gonna step and thrust at the same time. Hand slides down, pick it up, step and thrust. When you step and thrust, extend by moving that front arm to a locked position and pushing the back arm. You'll see that it won't lock. But from here to here, and then stepping will accelerate that strike. You'll literally put your whole body weight, your whole body, make sure you hold on to it, doesn't smack you like that, but your whole body is gonna come in behind that thrusting motion. Aim for his nose or his teeth or his throat or his solar plexus or this thin muscle between the privates and the belly button, anywhere in that center line that you can strike with that first basic self-defense thrusting strike. The second thing I want you to do is put your hand down the back. We went down the front first, now you're gonna slide down the back, pick it up, and again, you're gonna do a thrusting motion, almost like a powerful, forceful punch to the middle of his face for self-defense. Your hand is here, you slide it down, pick it up, and thrust. Your goal is to remove or destroy his ability to breathe, temporarily here, permanently here, take his teeth out of his mouth. Hello to everybody who's on here. Bring it down here and simply thrust. From this position, pull your elbow back, and then turn your hand over as you punch again. So you punch one, rechamber, pull it back, punch again, turning the hand over. That's gonna be one thrust to his face, and then that long, hard piece of oak along the side of his head for self-defense. Turn your shoulders and hips forcefully, and you'll get a much, much faster, harder strike. So very simple way to use the simple self-defense tool that could save your life, homemade self-defense tool, Slide your hand down the back, punch, retreat, and then hit him again. From this position, pull it up into your other hand. This is almost like you're answering your phone. Bring your hand up here, answer your phone, get the other hand on top, and now you've got a two-handed thrusting self-defense tool that will do a lot of damage for self-defense. You're pushing through his face. Bring your hand to the end and down on top. Finish right here, knock him out. You don't have to worry about what kind of tool he has to hurt you. You're defending yourself. Slide down the back, punch, pull, strike, answer your phone, thrust, pull, down on top. You can even bring that down to a knee, into the, the elbow, the shoulder, the ribs, into the side of the neck, into the temple for self-defense. So number one, slide down the front, pick it up and thrust, number two, slide down the back and punch. Number three, you might be carrying it like this. From this position, turn your palm up and you have a quick, fast thrust. This 
turning chopping strike coming into the side of the body, the temple, the neck, into the arm, into the ribs, into the waist, down into the knees, all for self-defense. From this position, you can also slide your hand to the back and push. Just like you're sliding, almost like you're playing pull, but you're sliding from this position forward. That's a very powerful strike. Pull it back. There's the strike you used the last time. So from here, your hand is here. Turn it, chop, push, sliding through. You'll see this is very fast, very powerful, very disruptive to him for self-defense. Pull it back down on top or again in at one of those angles. Real simple way from this position, turning your palm up. You could also simply pull it up like you're going to do a push-up, pushing through the body, coming down at this angle, turning, pushing, turning, and then bring it in the other side, pushing down at an angle, going into the nose, into the teeth, into the throat, into the solar plexus, all for self-defense. All the basic idea here is the principle of self-defense. It's something that you can remove or destroy. You have to ask yourself that question. What can you target? What is your target to strike? Then the techniques will present themselves. It'll be very basic, very easy for you to do that. Now, uh, Super Dave just asked the question. I've been waiting for this question. Super Dave, thanks. That's why I keep kind of looking. Hello to everybody who's here. Sorry I didn't say hello to everybody, but I really do appreciate your being here. Super Dave, if someone grabs your self-defense tool, you have to turn one way or another. And I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do it. The first thing I want you to do is, let's say you have it like this. And he grabs it in the middle. Or she. We'll call him a he. Right? Most bad guys are he's because they're, it's just the nature. Men are a lot more aggressive. So from here, turn, right? Turn. If his hands are here, all of a sudden you've compromised his wrist. And then from this position, you're going to push down, coming straight down into the top of his head. If his hands are here and then you push here, you're going to smash him right in his nose and his teeth and his eyes for self-defense. But you're going to turn. Why does this work? It's because he's trying to pull it out of your hands. As he's pulling it, his energy is coming this way. You're going to, as he's pulling it that way, you're going to let him go that way and then turn and then continue to use that momentum as you're going into him and bring it down into his face. Now, I don't have anybody here to demonstrate with. I will get somebody. We'll go over these. I'll show you. But it, it's, it, we practice it all the time. It works. I practice weapon retention every single time we train with any stick weapon. That, because this is, that's the most common question. Your question, Super Dave, is the most common question. What happens when someone grabs it? Hello, Texan writer. When they grab it, give it to them. Literally pushing in. As they're pulling back, it's almost like when you release the tension on a rubber band. So right now, he's pulling, you're pulling. Let it go in. And as it's going in, turn and then push down. If that doesn't work, turn back the other way. As he resists, you might be moving slowly. And so as you're turning, he might fight. Go back the other way and then push down. Once you push down, you can simply thrust in. Now, if you have it here, the first way, and you thrust in this way, and he grabs the end of your stick, put your stick against your body. It has to touch your backhand. It has to be touching your body. And as soon as you do that, as soon as you make this anchor, now he's wrestling with the whole weight of your body. If you don't anchor against your body, then he's going to be wrestling with your hands like this, and he's going to pull it out of the head. He's going to smash you with it. Don't let him have it that way. So from here, put it against your body, and then make a turning motion by doing two things. One, your hand is turning this way. You're making a spinning motion. And just like the other one, you can start going this way. He resists. Go back the other way. You can start going this way. He resists. Go back the other way. So you have to kind of play with how he's moving. You'll get this when you practice it. When you bring it this way, go down, just like you did with the other one. From here, you have this anchor here, turn your whole body. That's the second way you move. One is the hand, second is you're turning your shoulders and hips. Now the muscles that are in the front and the back of your upper body, the core muscles, are very strong, very powerful. Your belly muscles, your back muscles, your abdominals, all those back muscles. You're turning using those muscles. When you use the hand and your shoulders and hips, from here, push down. Once you push down, step, and you'll thrust right through him. If he's here at the end and he's grabbed hold of this 
all of a sudden that spinning motion is going to compromise his grip. Then you're coming down here and then you're going to shove him back. It works just like that. Turn here, down, and thrust. That's what happens when someone grabs your stick. You want to give it to them, but give it to them in a way that makes it work for you. Now, I want to go back to this first way because I want you to see that sliding down in the front, you can also lift it up. And I like this strike very much. It's very fast. It's very unexpected. And it's very easy for you to do without putting a lot of stress on your shoulders and your other joints. From here, you're simply lifting this lower part of your arm as you turn your shoulders and hips. Turning your shoulders and hips accelerates that strike. Stepping with it, you're gonna lift him up off the ground when you get him between the legs. If you miss between his legs, or maybe he covers up, you'll still come up and you might smash him right under the chin or into the nose, or maybe he's grabbing and you're gonna break that arm. Once you get it up, put the other hand on it, and then simply thrust. And thrust over and over again, until you're done thrusting, until the fight's over. The fight's not over until you win. That's how we uh, measure that one, right? So your hand slides down the front, snatch it up between his legs, and then step in on that thrust. Those are just some of the ways that you're gonna use this homemade self-defense tool that could save your life. I wanna show you how to make it though. So this is a 36 inch dowel rod. You go to Home Depot, you go to Lowe's, you go to Ace Hardware, or you go to your local hardware store, do-it-yourself store, if you're in uh, Europe, because they're not called hardware stores, it's called do-it-yourself, and you get a 36 inch dowel rod. It's a very standard size, and they usually come in two widths. One is an inch, this was an inch and a quarter. Yeah, so Patrick says he's got two homemade hanbos. Hanbo is the, the Okinawan or Japanese term word for this size staff. It's just 36 inches. Then, I found these recently, and I put some links below. If you, if you need to order this stuff online, if you live in the United States and you have Amazon or anywhere in the world, really, you can go to those links and then you can order this stuff and they'll mail it right to your house. It's like a dollar more than you would buy it at the store, right? You'd spend more than that in gas just getting there. Anyway, so this is a handyman block. Those are those blocks that you use to sand things. But this comes in, it's an all-purpose What's it say? Assorted grits, assorted grits. But I grabbed this one because it was like $1.30 and it had, has six pieces. But inside I can it easily, they're color coded. I like that so I can show you the three different grits. You start with 80, you can see the 80 right there. And they make this one green, they're not always green, usually it's just sand colored. But 80 means 80 pieces of sand per square inch. And what that means is that's gonna rip off most of the splinters and most of the things that are gonna get stuck in your hand, and then you're gonna cry like a little, you know what I mean? <laughs> Anytime we get splinters, right? Little things like that seem to make us cry because it hurts more than like if someone breaks your arm. But a little splinter, you just pull it out, but you sand it off with this 80 grit, and that's gonna make it pretty smooth. Then you're gonna need 120, and that 120 grit is gonna get it smooth. It's gonna feel nice and smooth but it's not smooth enough yet because we want it to be butter soft. We want it to slide through your hand so when you start doing all these techniques, you can smash. Hello, Jacob, it's good to see you. And then you're gonna go 220. You want this 220, this is extra, this is not the finest you can get, but this is fine. This is about as fine as you need. This will make it super fine. And you're gonna sand that. Now, one quick tip. I like to bevel the edges. And the way you do that is just hold your hand at an angle and just slide it up and down as you're turning and get a nice, and then get the top, right? Just make that smooth, get that little bevel there. That'll just help it when you slide through your hands like that. You'll get that nice little bevel. That's all you need. And it's only gonna take you, you just kinda take your hand, close it, but when you sand, if you've never sanded before, and I took a uh, wood shop when I was a kid in high school, so I know how to sand. Plus, I grew up working, so I know how to sand. Anyway, you don't close your hand. You've got to just keep your hand, just, it has to be just a little, right? A little bit. Yeah, the fine paper makes the fine stick. I like that, Aqua Chat. Thank you. Nice and smooth, and, and just turn your hand as you go through. There's no, there's no super science. You'll get better the more you do it, but you just want to you see some of that's falling off, some of the sawdust, and do that about 30 seconds per side, turn it in the middle, the other 30 seconds, 
and then this other piece of sandpaper, then the third piece of sandpaper, and then take a, a dry rag, you know, wipe off, and then you could get cheesecloth. If you have cheesecloth, use that, that's the best, right? But if you don't, just use an old t-shirt. Use a dry rag, pull up all the sand, the uh, sawdust, get all the saw, sawdust up that. Um, yeah, so and vaccinated says, can the wood be treated last longer? And not to dry it. That's where we are now. That's this next step. You must, and vaccinated, you must treat the wood with oil because when it comes from the store, they've received it. The hardware store that you buy it or the do it yourself shop, they get it from a lumber yard that kiln dries it. They stick it in, a, in an oven at a low heat for many days and it sucks all the water out. Hello, Geo Carlton. It's good to see you. They suck all the moisture out and then it becomes brittle. It won't rot, which is why they do it. They don't want it to rot and it won't uh, warp, but it will also, will, with, as soon as you hit it hard against something, it's gonna break in half. So you have to get oil on it. Um, yeah, Patrick says he oils every two days. This is boiled linseed oil. This is my favorite, this is the one I like to use. This bottle, it's gone up in price, everything has, right? but one of these bottles will last you five or six, 10 years easily. I've had this at least 10 years and I'm starting to get to the bottom because I've been using a lot of it lately making uh, the Tonbo. And I've been selling a lot of Tonbos, but this stick with this rag, you soak this rag and then you soak this and you get a nice thick coat on it and then you just let it sit for a little bit. And then you come back and, and then you pull off the extra oil you want to rub it in really well with your hand and then the next day oil it and then do that every day for two weeks oil it and then all that strength will come back to your wood and flexibility then it's not going to break it's going to get heavier so it strikes harder and it's going to get more flexible just because you've used your boiled linseed oil and you use your rag another way that i like to do it i actually have a bucket and i'll pour i have some linseed oil in there and then as i make these I can, you have to keep it covered or it'll, it'll dry up, but you just, you soak, you soak it. I soak it and I turn it like two or three times a day. I'll go up and I'll just agitate it. Just turn it for two days, let it soak for two days. And then it'll really regain all of the moisture that it needs, all the youthfulness it needs. And then you dry it off and then you only have to oil it like maybe every couple months, but that's all it takes. And the best thing about this homemade self-defense tool that could save your life and it could, right? Because, and it's not the stick that's gonna save your life, it's the skill. When you learn how to defend yourself with sticks, you take the skill with you everywhere you go. You might not have your stick, but you might have an umbrella, you might have a tent pole, you might have um, a long spatula, you, you might roll up a magazine and make a stick, you'll have the skill. Develop the skill, fighting with sticks, and then take the skill with you and then use it with the stick that's in your environment. Look around and find sticks wherever you go. I'm always looking for, if I need to defend myself, how do, how do I get out of here? How do I get my kids safe? How do I get my family out? And how do I fight if I have to? What can I fight with? But these two pieces right here. Yeah, uh, Awkward the Cat says, meaning, she's been meaning to take a tube of PVC. You can do that. You can make your own PVC tube. I just haven't yet because I haven't had time. And that's a great way to soak them. But this one piece, like three pieces of sandpaper, you're talking about a buck, like $1 US. And then you're talking about maybe six or $7 for your stick, an old rag. I don't know what that cost. And then maybe about 10 cents of boiled linseed oil. And for less than $10, you have a homemade self-defense tool that could save your life. So I wanted you to see that. I wanted you to see how to make your own, how to train with it, some of the techniques that you can do. I put links below if you want to uh, get your stick through the mail, if you want to get one of these bags. I, I don't always put the link in there because um, it's a serious investment. And then I've realized that a lot of you will make a serious investment for self-defense. So I, I decided I'm going to put that in there because I know that some of you have, have been looking for these and want to know where to get them. Have it shipped to you. You'll see in that link below, you can get it shipped right to you. Anyway, you guys have been awesome. I'll be back in just a little bit. We're going to train more this week, self-defense, and just keep this channel growing.